Okay, in this video I'll talk about something really interesting. Basically, you know that on schedules with a lower total sleep time, you're unable to stay awake as long as on schedules with a higher total sleep time, right? Basically, on every mat tree you can stay awake for like around 7 hours max uh, from nap tree to the core, while on every man 2, which has about an hour more of total sleep time, you can stay awake for around 8 hours between the second nap and the core, okay? Basically, the more sleep time you reduce on a polyphasic sleep schedule, the shorter you are able to stay awake until the next nap. The current explanation for this, uh, which I explained in the homeostatic pressure video, the link to that will be in the description, I talked about light sleep playing a role of buffering your ability to stay awake longer, but now I'll instead talk about an alternative hypothesis that I've come up with. Stay tuned! Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crimson Flower and I'm a main author of Polyphasic.net, the community recommended resource for polyphasic sleepers. So as you may know, I'm not a big fan of light sleep. You know, the, st the sleep stage which doesn't really serve any vital functions. It just helps with a bit of memory consolidation related to movements and buffering the time you are able to stay awake on polyphasic schedules. But wait... Is it even a function of light sleep? Is light sleep even responsible for the ability to stay awake longer? That's exactly what we'll discuss in this video. Let Let's start by talking a bit about adenosine. Adenosine, sorry. If you remember our video on coffee and sleep, linked in the description, uh, I talked about how caffeine makes you less susceptible to adenosine, which builds up resistance towards it and causes more adenosine receptors to appear. But what exactly is adenosine? Well, I'm sure you know what ATP is. It's the main energy source for basically all animals. When this is consumed in your brain, a waste product called adenosine is produced, which builds up in your brain. When you sleep, this waste is then cleared, uh, and when you're awake, you're building up more of it. At this point, the evidence indicates that adenosine is cleared more rapidly the more delta waves uh, delta wave activity there is in your brain. So in other words, slow wave sleep is the sleep stage mostly responsible for clearing adenosine. I haven't been able to find evidence for light sleep or REM sleep being responsible for clear the clearance of adenosine, but if you have a research paper that concludes that these sleep stages are also responsible for the clearance of adenosine, be sure to hit me up in the comment section below and I'll pin your comment. Regardless, we'll treat these sleep stages as redundant in terms of adenosine clearance for the rest of the video. Anyways, adenosine is the main hormone that regulates tiredness. The more adenosine there is in our brain, the more tired we feel. And now for the new hypothesis that I came up with uh, regarding the ability to stay awake longer, coined the adenosine alertness hypothesis. Basically, when you're awake longer, you produce more ATP. This ATP is then metabolized to adenosine, which builds up in your brain and makes you more tired. Um, while naps allow you to increase your alertness a bit, they don't do anything to the adenosine, which just increases and builds up more. Until you take your core sleep, which is full of slow wave sleep and resets the adenosine in your brain. So according to this hypothesis, it's not light sleep that allows you to stay awake longer, but instead adenosine that makes you unable to stay awake as long. And the more you stay awake in the day, uh, the lower your alertness boost is going to be from naps and the more adenosine builds up in your brain and the shorter you are able to stay awake until the next nap. Woo, great! <laughs> but if this conclusion holds, what does it mean? It essentially means that light sleep is even more redundant than we thought. And the more useless light sleep is, the safer we can feel reducing it we, uh, while we're sleeping polyphasically. So in essence, if the adenosine alertness hypothesis holds, we won't have to worry about decreasing the time we spend in light sleep as much as we had to before, because it's one fewer function of light sleep, you know. And 
You may be wondering how exactly we are going to go about testing whether this hypothesis explains what we see better than the current one. Well, I've thought about it and my idea is that the best way to validate uh, this one is to invalidate the previous one. The way we go about doing this is simply to compare the adaptability of schedules like Everyman 3, where the naps which don't contain any REM sleep, usually nap 3, would have different lengths, shorter lengths. So person 1 achieves so REM in nap 1 and 2, but not in nap 3. And the uh, same would be true for person 2. Person 1, person 2, okay, both situation. Then, person 1 would keep nap 3 as 20 minutes long, but person 2 would decrease the length of the nap to 10 or 15 minutes instead. If the decreased nap length doesn't interfere with the ability to uh, adapt to the same waking gap, or maybe 7 hours between nap 3 and the core, that's more evidence against light sleep homeostatic pressure alleviation hypothesis. <laughs> That's a mouthful. The light sleep homeostatic pressure alleviation hypothesis. And more evidence towards the adenosine alertness hypothesis. If this is the case, it would also up and open up the opportunity for us to create a nap called something like quick naps, where naps dedicated to simply letting people stay awake longer and not providing any REM sleep could be shortened in order to let people stay awake longer during the day. So in other words, very cool stuff. Okay, well, this is an interesting video, wasn't it? It's always nice to share new hypotheses with you and explains what happens in the forefront of polyphasic research. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions be sure to leave them in the comments section below. Subscribe if you haven't already done it, watch our video on homeostatic pressure and have a great day everyone. I'll see you next time and remember to have pleasant naps people. By the way, um, I said in this video that I was the one who did all this work, but I also want to give some credit to Discord user Simon, who essentially presented this idea to me, uh, which I then built up on. Uh, I don't want to discredit him and take all the glory for myself, so way to go Simon, good work. Okay, bye bye guys.